Hi everybody, welcome to our next zoo school segment here at Roger Williams Park Zoo. I'm Andrea, I'm one of the uh, educators here at the zoo, and I'm really excited to be able to bring the zoo to you today. Um, so today we wanted to focus on um, native wildlife, so the animals uh, that you can find right in your own backyard. Uh, so today we have a Virginia opossum, Ophelia, for you guys to meet. Um, and we're gonna get a chance to observe her and see some of the natural adaptations that she has for surviving here in New England. Let's see if we can get her to... So you might be noticing right away, she's doing a lot of sniffing. So possums don't have great eyesight, so they do like to find their way around by sniffing and listening. You'll get to see her ears moving around quite a bit too. And you'll notice now they're uh, pretty good climbers too. Oops. You might be able to see how she uses her tail. They have a really cool prehensile tail that can wrap around branches and help them balance as they're climbing. And you can see those really cool feet with the claws that they have as well. <laughs> Ophelia is one of our most curious opossums and she is really interested in the camera today. <laughs> So I think opossums are one of the most misunderstood animals that we have here in Rhode Island, but there's some really cool things about them that not a lot of people know. Um, so one of the things that I love about them is they're actually marsupials, just like a kangaroo. So they carry their babies in a pouch um, when they're born, uh, which is really cool. They're the only marsupial in North America. A lot of people, when they see them too, uh, will see them around their houses and their garbages. So not always seeing them in the best places, but they're really important to our ecosystem. They actually eat uh, a lot of ticks. So they help to keep the tick population down in Rhode Island, um, which is really important for us. And this is officially spring, so you'll start to see a lot of native wildlife coming out, and our native wildlife are uh, really good evidence that spring is here. So we can start to see um, different kinds of birds coming back from migration. You might see things waking up from hibernation, like snakes and turtles. I even heard uh, spring peepers the other day in my neighborhood. So you can be a scientist in your neighborhood and start to look for evidence of spring, like wildlife that are coming out, things that you might be hearing or seeing. And you can post in the comments to us today some of the things that you might be noticing around your uh, neighborhoods and out your windows that, ev that are evidence of spring. You probably won't see opossums as they're nocturnal, which means they are actually active at night. So they're gonna come out and meet their needs um, at the nighttime, usually around dusk till dawn they'll be out exploring. And this is also the time of year that when you're out exploring, you might find some uh, baby animals out that you might be concerned about or a hurt or injured animal. If you're ever concerned, you wanna make sure you keep a safe distance and get an adult for help. And you can contact the um, wildlife rehabilitators here in Rhode Island. We'll put a link in the comments um, that can help uh, guide you or answer your questions on local wildlife if you feel they're in danger in some way. But again, you never wanna approach them. You wanna keep a safe distance and observe from afar. So one of the best ways is, um, if you're interested in local wildlife too, is to draw a picture or maybe take some photos. And we'd love if you would post um, those pictures and photos in the comments so we can see some of the native wildlife that you're seeing as spring is happening here in Rhode Island. You might be wondering what she's eating too. So opossums are omnivores, which means they eat all different kinds of foods. Uh, they're opportunistic, which means they're gonna eat anything they can find and put in their mouths. They actually have the most teeth of any land mammal here in the United States, which is pretty cool too. Um, so she had some sweet potato this morning. She had some egg, uh, even some dog food. So she gets a little bit of everything here at the zoo. She's not very picky. You also might be wondering what you can do to help Rhode Island wildlife. 
So we encourage you to get involved in a citizen science project, and that is a way that community members, just like you, uh, can help out scientists by collecting important information and data about the wildlife here in Rhode Island. So here at the zoo in our big backyard, we participate in a citizen science program called Feeder Watch. Um, and we'll put the link to that in the comments. And there's another cool project called iNaturalist that you and your family can get involved in. There's an app or you can go online um, and collect data about the local wildlife that you can see out your window or in your backyard and neighborhood and help scientists get a better idea of what's happening here in Rhode Island. Well, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us for our Zoo School segment today on what's in your backyard. Uh, we hope that you'll again post in the comments some things that you're noticing or seeing by drawing a picture or posting a photo or a video so we can see what's happening out there and you can enjoy the local wildlife around your area as well. <laughs>